There's a big blue barn in my backyard. Last summer, it was full of bats, so I decided to make a bat house in the shape of Dracula's coffin in hopes of luring them in. A sneaky little trick on my part because, believe it or not, Dracula doesn't actually live in there. Now, I don't know if the bats actually went into that coffin and are living in there or not, but I do know that they're not in the barn anymore, and I think it's just because it got cold out. So I gave myself the whole winter to seal it up and make sure they can't get back in in the spring. But I didn't do that. Now I got about two weeks to get some barn doors built. Let's do it. So I got a whole bunch of pallets out of the garbage like usual, and then I spent way too much time taking them all apart. And once I had all the pallets apart, I decided I should probably do a little drawing for this and do some measurements. So using my handy dandy VHS tapes for a straight edge, I was able to come up with a quick drawing with some measurements, and then I carried a whole bunch of wood over to my miter saw. I set a positive stop on my fence, and then zip, 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 made a whole bunch of cuts. All these cuts are, I think, 36 inches or something like that. But it doesn't actually matter what the measurements are because you're going to make it to fit your own space, so whatever. Then I went over and measured my existing door. After I measured the door, I measured my 2x4s and then cut them all to the same exact length as one another. It was going good and then all of a sudden... Whoop! Safety first, people. I cut this little block of wood to 7 eighths of an inch so I could set my saw blade on my table saw to 7 eighths of an inch and I wanted to make sure it was perfect so I could cut this piece of wood to 7 eighths of an inch then raise the blade up to, you got it, 7 eighths of an inch. I need to cut a slot in my 2x4s and my 2x6s that the pallet wood will be sliding into. Now I could have used my router table and routed this spot out instead of running it through my table saw multiple times but I didn't feel like getting out the router table and it took me a long time but whatever if you have a router table use that instead I set my table saw fence with that little block that you can see me attaching right there to 7 eighths of an inch I put that block on my table saw fence so that when I run my piece of wood through the table saw blade it doesn't pinch between the fence and the blade if it does pinch between the fence and the blade you could end up shooting the piece of wood back at yourself and dropping your hand directly into the blade which would not be good once I went through all my 2x6s and made that rip cut, I made this quick little sled that'll ride on my table saw fence so I could whoop, remove that little piece right there. Now it was time to go through all these pallet boards again. I had to cut every one of these with a nice little overlapping half lap type joint. You tell me in the comments what kind of joint this is because I can't remember what it's called. Once I had all that done, I went outside and with a chisel I was able to just clear out the little slot. I stained all my wood, wiped all the stain off, got a nice color there. Then I could apply some indoor and outdoor glue and slide it right into that slot. Mm, boink! There we go. Throw a couple screws in from the side, which I pre-drilled and recessed. Well. Doing the same thing again, screwing, pre-drilling, all that shit. And we, oh, it must be the next day because I did that weird slow fade thing. Good God, I look like Norm Abrams in Jeffrey Dahmer's ugly child. Abnormal Abrams. Sorry. Wait, 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 I got one more. I look like Bob Vila's degenerate brother. Slob Vila. Then I could take these pallet boards and slide them down into that slot I created earlier and then I could take the final end piece of 2x4 and hammer that down on and screw it in. I'm not going to bore you by showing you me making both of these doors because that would be silly but I did the same exact process one more time. I applied a little bit of stain on the pallet wood, sanded it all back just so the pallet wood in the low spots would match the wood on the outside frame of this door. And with the magic of television, both doors were done. Now it was time to take the old barn doors off. I started by taking this molding across the top off of the barn, then I was able to remove the barn doors. I brought over the brackets from the old barn doors, put them back on, and lined them up with my new barn doors. and drilled my holes, put the bolts through, screwed them in tight. Once I had both barn doors up, I put a board down the whole front where the one door will overlap the other like you can see right here. 
I took all the hardware off the old doors, put them on the new doors. Then I sealed around any seams that I had from the inside of the barn to make sure that no bats can get inside. After that, I sealed these barn doors and with that, these barn doors were done. I cleaned out the upstairs of the barn and sealed that all up earlier in the winter and with these new doors in, I think I might be okay to keep the bats out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Later. Bye. See you again and have a good dream.